Today, we're going to talk about MiG-29's new generation, which includes MiG-29M fighters, MiG-29K and MiG-35. There's a lot to talk about, but because of time constraints, we cannot talk about everything in one place. We'll try to keep this video brief and only talk about the most important points. We'll start off from the background. During 1970s, Mikoyan started working towards increasing the MiG-29 combat potential. These were second-generation MiG-29, which were called MiG-29M in Russia, and Russian Air Force called it ISDL-9. The overall idea was to develop a 4-plus generation multi-role fighter. When engine development took place, Glimov made a new version of RD-33 engine, which was called RD-33K. It was made for MiG-29K fighters. Its engine core was modified, its turbine's first stage cooling was modified, because of that thrust numbers increased, through which during dry stage this engine could produce 54kN thrust and during after burning stage it produced 86kN thrust. Its specific fuel consumption was also 6-7% lesser than that of previous RD-33 engine during full after burner, also thrust to weight ratio was more. But this engine's naval version was capable of producing 92 kN thrust, which helped as an assistant during the ski jump. The new engine also had duplex FedEx control, where FedEx stands for Full Authority Digital Engine Control. Also, there was duplex automatic fuel flow management system and a new KSA-3 gearbox, which helped in increasing the overall reliability. Also because of FedEx, the engine's acceleration increased. If talked about the design improvements, the air intake was redesigned and the protection doors and the dorsal auxiliary intakes were removed and they were replaced by a downward hinged grid. Also the intake had a lower lip, which can be deflected downward by 20 degree so that at high angles engine's operation is improved. Airframe was also changed, forward fuselage was made of aluminium lithium alloy and the structure was welded, not riveted, which helped in saving a lot of weight. The specific gravity of the new materials being used was also low. The internal fuel capacity increased as well. In several other parts of the airframe composite materials were used, as well as radar observant material coating was also done on the aircraft, which reduced its RCS by 10%. The pilot's seat was uplifted for better visibility and the shape of canopy was made more convex. Aircraft slugs, that is leading edge root extension, was given sharper edge as well, so that more powerful vertices can take place during high alpha performances. Even aileron span was increased. Overall, the aircraft was made to have better low speed handling capabilities. The upper fuselage had changes as well and the split brake was changed into SU-27 style one-piece dorsal air brake. Due to the removal of dorsal auxiliary intake, there was more space formed internally and more fuel was able to be kept. Internal fuel carrying capacity increased up to 1000 litres and became 5720 litres and the range was increased by 30 to 40 percent. The landing gear was made stronger so that it can absorb higher crosser weight. The baseline MiG-29s had single brake parachute with area of 70 m square. Due to increased space in the new MiG-29, it could carry two parachutes which had area of 13 m square. The wheel brake was made stronger as well, which improved the deceleration after landing. Flight control had quadruplex fly-by-wire system for pitch control with no mechanical backup. Triplex fly-by-wire was there for roll and yaw control with mechanical backup. This would make the aircraft statically unstable in the pitch control channel. The drag because of pitch train during cruise mode was also made low. The fuel economy and range improved a lot. So this was about engine and structure. Moving towards avionics, the new fighters had S-29M weapon control system, which had RLPK-29M radar targeting system and OEPRNK-29M targeting navigational suit. This system has Fazotron N010 Zoog Beetle Fire Control Radar. Weapon Control System had new TS-101 digital processor and the old TS-100 was installed with the new software. This radar was able to track 10 aerial targets and was able to engage its missile on 4 priority threats. 
the detection range of the radar was 80 km for 3 m square RCS in head on mode. Radar had a flat blade slotted array with mechanical scanning and were able to cover 90 degrees area in azimuth. They also had electronic scanning ability in elevation. They're also available with ground mapping mode and was capable of low, medium and high resolution mapping. The radar weighs around 220 kgs, which is 60% lesser than that of the previous radar N019. Speaking of OEPR and 29M optoelectronic targeting and navigation suit, it had OLSM with combined IR and TV searching track and laser ranger unit. Aircraft also included helmet mounted sight. It was capable of finding aerial targets and their coordinates. But they also helped in air to ground role by providing target designation for laser and TV guided weapons. This new IRST unit also had a deep cooling system, which helped in increasing its detection range. Speaking of cockpit, there were new multifunctional displays, hands-on throttle and stick control capabilities. Hard points were increased to 9 with 5500 kg capacity. We'll further move on to MiG-29K, so let's keep it there till now. Jai Hind.